Okay, hello, hello everyone. Um, I'm Elena and we're having a guest, Shiv Machor, uh, writer of the books and uh, meditation teacher and practitioner. So he can tell us a bit more uh, about it. Uh, so uh, Shiv, I would like to carry on our discussion and if anybody was watching our podcast uh, one to one, so we could just carry on. And uh, today I would like to ask about um, value of the mantras while meditating and what did they do? Are they uh, necessary um, and how are they helping? What would you say about that? So, uh... Yeah, now this is a very different question from the sequence uh, I have been following. But yeah, this is a very common question people ask. How does a mantra chanting helps in meditation? Or how does a mantra, listening to a mantra helps in a meditation? So again, as I will like to say that meditation is it's a process. So, And when you reach that state of mind which is in control, then you actually start the actual meditation where you are focusing on something and you keep focusing on that for a long period of time and then you get those answers. So that's, again, just to bring that clarity again. Now I will bring this mantra. Uh, uh, it's like a technique, I would say. It's it's like a it's another okay. tool. I won't call it a technique. There are tools to prepare yourself to purify your mind. So mantra is something... Uh, I would say any technique, before I talk about mantra, I'll say any tool or a technique is a distraction. It's another distraction to remove other unwanted distractions. Or mm -hmm. I won't say, I won't call it a distraction, but to remove those distractions, you are given something. So you start thinking about this particular thing. Your focus shifts from everything unwanted to this something which is pure. Um, now, if I say mantra, if you're listening to a mantra, mantra has purity. It is, uh, uh, it's devotional and uh, it has some spiritual and religious uh, attributes. So it is devotional. It is, what is devotional is actually you are surrendering. You are submitting yourself to some higher power. So you are surrendering your ego. That's the essence of devotion. And that's where the mantra chanting, everything comes in. Because in mantra, you are chanting some name or nam jap, name jap or something like that. So when you are doing that, you are naturally able to focus, shift your focus from everything else to this. And this starts making you feel good because anything good will make you feel good, which is pure, inherently pure. Inherently pure, which is also shifting your focus Shifting your qualities, which are governed by ego and control, to a shift to devotional mantra, which makes you move into a surrender and and uh, some surrendering your ego and acknowledging someone someone higher power. So that's the essence of this mantra. So it's a shift which happens from distractions to this, and uh, and plus they have different uh, scientific. There are some signs behind those mantras that they emit certain frequencies. So we have forgotten the, the, that signs behind those mantra chanting because they have to be chanted in a particular way, in a particular pronunciation. So there are there's a lot of other aspects to mantras. So when if I can't chant a mantra properly, I can probably listen to some nice, beautiful mantras which resonate with your heart. And once they resonate with your heart and they connect with your heart, you forget everything else. So it can take you into a meditative state. So this regular practice will help you to purify and how it purifies it, it will remove you from anything else, worldly, external, and connect through that music, like music connects. So mantra is also a form of music. It connects you to your heart. It, 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 it is more purifying. It is not a nonsense song. It's very deep rooted meaning songs and with devotion. So it is also increasing your devotional ability, uh, trust ability to trust, increasing your uh, quality of trust and surrender and accepting somebody higher. So slowly, slowly, this uh, negativities are removed through this practice. So it's it's a practice. 
it's like a mechanical physical practice which purifies so and the other one i am have been telling uh, of purification is by understanding how the mind works it's more of a you're working more on the logical level of the brain and here you are working on a uh, mechanically on a on the brain through a mechanical means and uh, there is a virtual and a logical means which is more of uh, knowledge based uh, or intelligence based so there are different paths together you work to purify your mind and to control your mind so i, I would I made myself myself clear probably. yeah so i understand uh, that it's it's not bad if you want to start it will help you to focus so if you just want to begin and you struggle with that so this might help at the start of your journey uh, to to learn how to disconnect your mind from the the outside world is a yes so there, it's it's like a choice you have a choice to listen to something not so good and you have a choice to listen to something which is good which makes some internal changes in you unknowingly yeah. what those changes i have explained that you have you in you enhance your trust you enhance your trust in the creation you enhance you surrender to the creation you surrender your ego and and obviously you are developing that trust and faith uh, in something which is more supernatural or more powerful which you are, cannot visualize but you do feel that is something so there is a different connect which happens and it disconnects actually there is a disconnect which is happening mm. and the connection is happening to something good so yeah. if you have 24 hours in a day and if you spend 20 hours in something good naturally take you in a different direction rather than spending those 20 hours into something else so it's very uh, uh, logical mm. or like that. partly scientific you can say that how you disconnect to something bad yeah. right um and another um question i was thinking about um is it i know you're talking about this connection but uh some people use meditation to uh as a tool for maybe to how to say it maybe to create the future or see the future to visualize uh where you where they want to be and they perhaps believe that by doing that um, it will happen that in the future it will happen it's uh, like many people believe that if you can visualize something that you want um, it's already possible um, to happen you so like you creating your own future you would you say is it possible to see um, future that that you want to create for yourself uh, through the meditation because you said you can get an answers many answers yeah maybe you have an answers for the past but do you have a answers for the future so the thing is that uh, we have to understand the dharma the human values and the qualities on which the humans should be basing their thoughts and action on now this thought itself has to be really understood in depth that i want to create a future now if i want to create my future so do i have to do something differently and or should every human be doing something based on certain reference foundation so so what i want to create something different from others what is that and what future i want to create what is that i want is it a materialistic desire i want to create if i am trying to create something which is more artificial and materialistic and i think i can create through meditation or if i give a simple example i want to become i want to have 1 million dollar if that is a goal and you think you can create through meditation it will not happen mm -hmm. your goal also has to be ideal you you need to understand what you want to achieve in life uh, yeah achieve but if what i is such show you path maybe uh... No, but what the, you need uh, the to goal do should for be that. correct. Goal should be correct. If I say I want to have one million dollar and I feel uh, that's the right goal to have, then that's not right. Yes, yes, uh, of course, yes. So you um, can't manifest everything in life, you know, because <laughs> if it's if the intention is wrong, 
then you can't align spirituality to that because anything wrong cannot be manifested through meditation or like uh, I, I don't think that the whole desire the whole uh, premise is the foundation of this whole idea is wrong that people mm -hmm. think and uh, through meditation I can manifest anything only that can manifest which will which is scientifically designed to be manifested mm -hmm. which is there is a equality there is a equality unanim unanimity in the whole creation and uh, God has not created people to have differences or have more or less what yes. what what is a goal in life is this this itself is misleading because my the goal of every human should be uh, I should be in uh, permanent state of happiness yes if, if that what else should be a goal that's all is all uh, artificial yeah yeah I agree with you hundred <laughs> percent and also um <clears throat> So some people uh, use guided meditation, and but more to to relax, to maybe um, they want to hear themselves. Themselves, but you see, you're saying meditation used to disconnect, but they're trying to connect with with themselves, and they say, for example, that they cannot uh, follow the guided meditation because they cannot. Uh, see they don't have this um, you know visions and in that they're saying that oh, mm, I cannot meditate so but this is wrong from the original meditation is this is this right that's what I understood from our, our conversation what would you say see, guided meditation is uh... Uh, I mean, what is guided meditation? Who can guide someone? And what, what, how will they guide someone? How can you, can when you can't control your thoughts, how can somebody else make you control your thoughts? What is he doing to make you control? Uh, well, he, they just, they just say, uh, focus on your breath. But how can, if I tell you, remove your thoughts, can you remove your thoughts? If somebody tells you, sit like this, close your eyes, focus on your breath, okay, you can focus. After some time, your thoughts will keep coming in. How will you focus? So, uh, guided is what he's only giving some instructions. He will play some music. So, you will get, uh, you know, sometimes you will, the focus will shift to the music. For that time, you will feel good. So, you are like a, you are like a fool actually, who feels I don't have to do anything. Somebody else will make me do and he'll do something magic and then I'll, I'll get, med I'll do meditation. Now, meditation is not for doing. Meditation mm -hmm. is not to be done. It is a state of mind. You don't yeah. do meditation. When you when you are in a meditative state, you are doing nothing. Meditation mm -hmm. is about uh, being empty. Empty mm -hmm. means uh, empty doesn't mean that you stop doing your work, your responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Meditation is focus. Focus on what is to be done at that moment. Mm -hmm. And when you focus on something, when you're doing a job, you're doing it sincerely with full focus. It is done perfectly. So the whole idea that my performance... As a human, I should be performing optimally. And when I'm performing optimally, that means I'm fully focused on it. I'm not thinking of anything else. Mm -hmm. So a human has to perform and perform perfectly, fully focused. That's the whole idea. And what, what is my performance is my tasks, which are totally overlapping on my responsibilities in my life, which is those responsibilities are related to the roles I have in this society. And the society has created a social structure and I, I I am being given certain positions, maybe a father or maybe a son or whatever it is and my neighbor or a citizen as a citizen I have certain responsibility uh, when I walk on the road or when I drive a car I have to follow certain law similarly in the house also there has to be a law I have to follow uh, I have some roles, responsibilities and for that I have been doing some tasks so my task is a prime thing and focusing in those tasks is the only aspect of my life. What we do is totally distracted. And uh, this is guided meditation and all. We are distracted. We don't want to understand why we are distracted. But we feel we'll go somewhere. Some technique will be told. Somebody will give us guided meditation. And people are making fool out of people. You know, you are only, you go in some environment. They'll light some candles, some incense sticks close the room, uh, change the lighting arrangement, you'll feel nice for that moment and then mm -hmm. you'll come out. 
so it's they are they are physically fooling you for that moment of time and <laughs> oh, okay if suppose that 30 minutes you sat in a room and did some guided meditation teacher he did some lighting arrangements incense sticks and this and that some some gong here and there and all and can you do that for 24 hours you have to go and work you <laughs> when the moment you leave that environment you are back to the same your mind is again uh, captured by all the externalities so are you really logically disconnected from those mm -hmm. external externalities or not that is more important so how the logical change has to be done how the conditioning has to be done of the brain that is that's a science and it is not that somebody you go to some studio and they do something for those 30 minutes and you feel mm -hmm. great and say oh I, every day i'll go to for 30 minutes <laughs> it's it's like switching off the engine for th car car is running for 24 hours you switch it off for 2 hours if you run the vehicle for non stop for 10 days 24 hours it will break down somewhere mm -hmm. so we we a body has been designed to rest to switch off the mind we sleep the mind gets switched off now meditation is switch off your mind when you are actually awake that's what mm -hmm. is meditation what our mind is not switched off when we are not doing anything you we our mind is constantly running around all all over the world so we have not we are not switching off our mind so then we get stressed mind is also need some rest brain is a physical entity of the body and if you don't switch it off logically then or electronically like computer we switch off the computer mm -hmm. if you don't switch off the computer uh, it will keep getting back end processing something and some bugs will come something will happen so you also need to switch off the computer some logically i, I would say Mm. And that uh, will be a little bit personal question. So, how long uh, the, for you it's taking now uh, to to get into a meditation state? You don't get into a meditation state. You reach that state. You attain that oh. state, and mm. uh, that state can change up and down. It can go up and down based on uh, how strongly you have reached that state and how strongly you have perfected that state. how strongly have you uh, controlled your qualities change your qualities how strongly have you re removed your ego uh, how strong is your conviction how strong is the will power now which is not letting those negative qualities take take over you again so so it's a state we all are in a certain state of mind at a given point of time so if if i by regular practice by awareness by consciously uh being aware of the negativities in the external world and inside me if i am able to bring uh, control myself my positive qualities so my mind uh, the way my mind is will go to work will be in a very positive state and it's a state and it doesn't change overnight like it it remains pretty much constant but yeah there are always constant effort by the illusion uh, the maya which tries to distract you and that's a practice to keep uh, being aware of that and not getting distracted and controlled by those external negativities so it's a state once you reach that state you really don't have to put in much effort like if i'm working uh, i totally focus on my work i just cannot think of anything else mm -hmm. and uh, if i am not working i don't have to worry because uh, don't uh, nothing else comes and bothers me Mm -hmm. So I don't have to do anything actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. So and uh, uh, I can give no, you an example if you want. Yes, please. Like uh, uh, there is uh, uh, there's a greed. So due to greed, there is a desire. There's a desire, and I'm influenced by the external world, the glamour of the world. Like I want a, a car. I want some Mercedes, and I feel I should have a Mercedes. So my mind is constantly thinking of Mercedes, Mercedes, and I'm I'm my desire or the greed is because everybody has it, and I feel I should also have it, and I'll feel successful. So people will acknowledge me when when you talk about acknowledgement, that people will acknowledge. Then you have a greed for fame, and you want to be acknowledged by others. to prove your existence you are not happy with your 
without acknowledgement you there is no need to acknowledge being acknowledged by the world you still remain the way you are but these are false uh, uh, you know perceptions in the society that mm. only when 10 people acknowledge you and 10 people see you in that car they see you'll feel oh you know i'm better than others so there is a kind of a competition you are into so there are a whole lot of negative tendencies which are driving certain desire and that's making you unhappy yeah so if you don't have that greed you are content and content is a state being content mm. with what you have is a state but being not content with what you don't have is a problem and then you can do all kind of guided or unguided meditation nothing will happen because you are influenced by the external and negative qualities and the social perceptions of consumerism materialism capitalism mm. uh, how they are manipulating the society so you are you are a manipulated person manipulated by the society so if you if have you, to escape <laughs> yeah if you, this is but once you realize that you are manipulated then you start looking for escapes but till the time you are not realizing i am manipulated and then you feel you don't realize that you are manipulated and you you are every moment you are a manipulated person and you don't realize the day you realize you are being manipulated you start looking at escapes and when you look look at escapes you look at mantras you look at uh, you know some uh, spiritual discussion then you shift your focus you will say no i'll not go to a pub i will go for a spiritual discussion yeah so that's how <laughs> the changes happen yeah but how would uh, yes you put, you you say it's state and you reach that but um how long did does it take you uh, i don't know a week a day uh, how how much of the this effort well personally you on your experience um had to put in to to reach this this state let's say so it is very different like uh, somebody Uh, there are three people one person is conditioned in a certain way second person is conditioned uh, was conditioned in america somebody was conditioned in russia somebody was conditioned in india so you have three people conditioned differently mm-hmm. and they are in a different state of mind now american is highly materialistic more trapped into the uh, depths of materialism and consumerism mm-hmm. a russia a person in russia is maybe at Uh, if american is 90% amar russian is suppose 60% and indian is suppose 40% mm-hmm. so all will take different time because the conditioning is different how how negatively they are influenced with their negative qualities how how are they how much are they influenced with the negative qualities how much of the negative qualities are impacting them uh, how, how they are conditioned uh, in, in a way that their negative qualities are more prominent So mm. accordingly they will take more time to like you are in a uh, marsh and you are in a mud you know dirty water and how deep you are more time will take the deeper you are in the more the time will take to come out of it so the uh, the realization the awareness the consciousness to understand that i am manipulated that has to come first and that's the first realization and second then you have to see uh, what Uh, how it is impacting me and then you start working to change so so uh, time is different for everyone and how much will power somebody use how much uh, discriminatory uh, or the intelligence ability person is able to uh, exploit for its own benefit will make that changes you know because the brain is to be reprogrammed the conditioning has to be redone and when you have to do reprogram the brain you have to keep sending uh, same new changed perceptions to the brain the new feedbacks new inputs to the brain and when you repeatedly do so then the pattern is that makes a pattern mm-hmm. and when the pattern is embedded in the brain then the new program is made so this mm-hmm. will take time it can take 10 days 20 days months how sincerely a person is serious about making those transforming oneself it's transformation so transformation uh, is all about how serious that person is how sincere that person is what is his destiny previous life's karmas present life karmas uh, uh, what destiny he has or or what how sincere that person is how well he has understood this 
uh, artificiality of the uh, physical world and how well he is now able to be aware, conscious about the actual real world, which is consciousness and uh, not this transient temporary physical world. Hmm. Yes, but uh, many people, you know, they, um, what I hear um, around me, they say that they, they realize this, that they are under control and they want to uh, get out of this matrix and they want to uh, work on themselves, um, but they don't know where to start. They uh, mm. they start to having these questions. Yes, like um, what is my real my purpose? Uh, how to exactly. find? Yeah, how to find this um, inner peace? Align what is your soul uh, actually wants? And uh, do you actually follow your um, your destiny? Let's say, or you just and people doesn't know they don't know how to listen to the their soul. They don't know what direction they have to take. They know they they feel they not in the right place, uh, but they struggle to hear uh, hear themselves. I would say. Yes, uh, this is something very interesting you brought out because in my class uh, also I told uh, in words of uh, I told those students that you're very fortunate that you're realize that you need to change mm. and that's why you are here and that's why you're seeking somewhere who can bring those changes and give you some direction how to go about it. So I said you you are actually in some way fortunate or destined or you have done good karmas that now you have come to that stage where you have accepted that you need to change and you accept that there is a problem and uh, so you are looking for answers. So like there was a girl, she got married uh, in my class, she was in my class and she was, she got married after a few months and she was engaged I think and she she had some issues with her boyfriend that time and uh, uh, she, she, was, she used to ask me questions and uh, I gave very nice answers to her and that made the difference in her life. And then after two months, I saw that they got married. So she had some issues with her boy and that he does like this and does like that. Then I clarified and she was very thrilled. So the so point is that people are open to know and the problems and spiritually understand them and find a direction. And uh, that's the problem which is happening because, uh, 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 as I said, meditation is two stages. The first stage is prepare, preparing for uh, reaching a mind state of mind which is uh, of happiness so how do you do that is uh, it will and taking advantage of this uh, 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 you know requirement in the society now in the west that's how these commercial things have popped up and that that itself is a big uh, a dilemma because uh, people are getting uh, fooled and distracted uh, when they are trying to find a right, right source. And as yes. I told you, that West West is seeking, and in India, in India they are not seeking. But in the West, they are seeking. In the West, they have realized they have hit the yeah. they have hit the bottom or whatever you call it. They they have everything. They have all the best of the infrastructure and best of the civic sense and discipline on the road. <laughs> Government provides a lot. Unlike in India, this India can be extremely poor. So they had every, everything, but they didn't have the peace of mind. Now, what went wrong? I used to tell my friends in West, I said, you people are lucky. You have a heaven. Uh, you, you, you have a be Europe is beautiful and, uh, and you, you just have screwed up your mind and due to your ego and uh, due to your uh, greed and extreme materialism. So you need to identify what's gone wrong. Despite having everything, why are you so uh, mentally harassed? So uh, the, the thing is that they are seeking. Unfortunately, they are not getting integrated with the right uh, uh, person who can guide them. And uh, unfortunately, there are loads of horde of uh, uh, people trying to, you know, half with not even half cooked knowledge or half baked knowledge. They're trying to set up centers and creating these techniques and tools. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that, that's a sad, that's something I feel is grossly missing and uh, the right people are not there to guide them. Uh, it's all, uh, all about those who are doing it. They are 
happy to be famous, happy to be rich, living luxurious life, and uh, and and still guiding a lot of people. Like this guy is there, Jay Shetty. Now he's a big guy. He's living in a big ranch and interviewing Joe Biden and all those big people. So. <laughs> Well, yeah, but uh, I'm glad to see that many people, I think, now is uh, like seeking. have spiritual awakening, yes, and seeking yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, is just probably not enough uh, for the amount of people waking up. Not 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 enough uh, the right teachers and uh, and guides who can um, direct them in the right the right direction <laughs> and give the right. Uh, right tools unfortunately but hopefully it yeah. will be, pick up <laughs> as well <laughs> yeah i think it, uh, the time is coming you can see the change in 2018 when i started going to europe to teach and i thought i will have to teach on uh, yoga the asan one the postures that's more popular but over a period of last four, three four years i have realized the shift is happening towards meditation because yoga has not really given that benefit which actually uh, it should have given because it's not been taught uh, with meditation as a, fo as a focus but adds a focus on the asanas mm. so uh, unfortunately the yoga has not been taught right rightly and this is something which i wanted to understand how is yoga being practiced in the west and what is being taught so when i went to different places i realized uh, that uh, you know somebody comes to India, takes some certificate, goes and start teaching some asanas, and just doing it for uh, yeah. You all have to sustain life. You all need to earn some amount of money, but uh, uh, how much and where to live and how to live, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of lifestyle that needs to be really deeply understood spiritually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, um, would you like to add anything because we sadly again uh, we're running out of time <laughs> somehow it's passing very very fast <laughs> maybe yeah, you'd yeah. like to uh, add anything suggestions or uh, advice I would, uh, 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 see that's why I wrote these books basically uh, instead of you know doing a lot of uh, random talks or uh, making YouTube videos because people don't have patience to listen to you for more than five, two minutes, three minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, and also it is very unstructured uh, way of communicating. Like if you are making a series, then you know, you're asking, today you'll have some questions, you'll ask something. It may not be connected with the previous session. It may be connected. So we, though there are, these are pretty interesting because question answers are very interesting, uh, appear interesting to people. And... Uh, so I wrote these books because I thought it's like a documenting of the whole process. So if we, and these are not very long book, big books. This is 140 page book with fonts 40, not font, uh, even 12, big font. So it's in a short span. I have tried to explain the process. If people read the books, you have, I mean, people also have to put an effort. People yeah. say that there is no right person to teach, but you also need to make your own effort to find the truth. And yeah. if you don't make an effort and people don't want to read the book, don't want to understand the book. And I have a friend who is very intelligent and uh, the, uh, he's quite a learned guy. He read the books many times back and forth. He said, I kept on going back and forth because there are a lot of interconnections. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. And he's yesterday I was speaking to him. He said, this is my book of life. Mm. He, he quoted and he's, he's a very learned guy, very highly accomplished guy. He said, this is a uh, uh, book of my life. These three books are book of my life. So if people can read them and they, they can uh, probably explore themselves. Uh, I don't know how many people can I help directly. Well, maybe I you can directly. tell them, tell us where we can, people can uh, buy them. Maybe is it just in India or we can buy them on the internet? They are available. They are available all over the world. They are available okay. uh, in any every country, almost every country. And you have to just search by my name, Shiv Mathur. You'll find uh, all those. Uh, in fact, on my website, I've given where all my books are available. If uh, That's why I made the website mainly so that my books can reach out to more people. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the whole idea of making a website. 
but uh, i don't know how many will reach uh, read them and how many will understand so that's beyond my control probably <laughs> well if, if people want uh, looking for the right guidance i think they uh, they should look for your books <laughs> and yeah, get but that yeah, we all are like a we all like one of those this one uh, one of the fish in the ocean so <laughs> who knows who you are like so it's it's not easy to be you have experience and... <laughs> you have experience <laughs> and knowledge so it's valuable very valuable <laughs> mm -hmm. okay um she okay. Was, uh, was very nice to talking to you thank you again uh, for opening up our mind uh, our vision widen it <laughs> give us valuable knowledge and uh well uh, hopefully i'll see you again soon <laughs> sure sure thanks thank thanks, thanks all the best Bye. Thanks. Same Bye. to you. Wish you all the best. Bye.